Okay, so let's talk a little bit about how an array list and a linked list differ from each other. And to do that, we're actually going to use a picture. How about that? So, um, so the question with both of these list implementations comes down to how do they maintain order? How do they know which item is which um, in the list, which is important if I want to do things like be able to get and set an element by index. Um, the array list that we've been looking at so far maintains this array, right? So let's say this list has four items. It has an array of size four, and every one of these um, a, these slots in the array, this is you know my object um, array, right? My handwriting's terrible. That's why I don't do stuff like this. Um, so you know I've got one, two, three, four slots, and every one of these slots could refer to some object, right? And let's say that I've got strings in here, and this is test, and this is me, and this is what. Um, and this is here, or something like this. Um, and so, you know, these, these four, these are actually string references, right? But they're in this object reference array, which is fine, uh, because string has an is a relationship with object. So, so how do I know which one is which? Well, I look it up in this array. So if you ask me what item is the position uh, two or index two, I say, okay, I go into the array zero, one, two, and I use that, I get the reference to this item one. Um, so that's how an array list maintains order. But it's not the only approach, right? So let's look at a different approach um, that we're gonna pursue with our code today. So the other approach is, um, and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna start by thinking about representing a single item. Um, and so a single item in this list looks like this. Um, it has actually two references. One reference, I'm gonna try to uh, represent the same string as I did before. So one reference refers to the string. This is an object reference. And the next one we'll talk about in a, and the next one refers to the next item in the list. So the way this one works is, so uh, the first item was test. The next uh, reference refers to another item where the value is me. And then its next reference refers to another item. I'll put it down here where the string reference is what? And the item reference, and now I'm gonna kind of loop around because where these are in memory is sort of irrelevant. Uh, all that I needs to be true is to make sure that this reference chain is set up properly. So this refers to the last string in my list here. And now this reference is null. This is the last item in the list and so this reference doesn't lead anywhere. So now I've got I still have a list, and actually this in many ways looks a lot more like a list than the first one I drew. There's no array here. These are a class that we're gonna design as part of our implementation of a linked list. And all the linked list class has to maintain is this is the start of my list. So I'm gonna have a reference to an item. This is like an item class. That's actually what we're gonna call it. Um, each item class consists of two private variables. One is a reference to any object, and in this case, these are strings, and the other is a reference to another item. Um, and so you can almost think about it, uh, let's go back and look at the first implementation again. So the analogy I like to use here is this is almost like having, uh, if I wanted to line you up uh, in an auditorium, this is like having you sit in consecutive seats. So I bring you down to the front row, and I say, okay, you sit here, you sit here, you sit here, and I line you up in consecutive seats. And then if I wanna find the third person in the row, I look at the person in the third seat. Um, the disadvantage of this is that if I wanna move you later, I've gotta have a bunch of you get up, like when we did an insertion into our array that used objects. If I wanna insert something, I have to have a bunch of you get up and move over so that I can insert that new person into the, into the orb. In contrast, this approach is almost as if I gave each of you the name of the next person in the list. So rather than having you sit down in order, I give each of you the name of another person, and that's how I maintain the list. Now, what's a little more uh, interesting about this is if I want to figure out what item is at position, let's say, two or index two, so the third item in the list, when I had my list that I used in array, I was just able to look that up immediately by indexing into the array. But when I have a list that uses this approach, sometimes known as a linked list, I actually have to walk the entire list because the only thing the list knows is where the list starts. So 
So I use the start reference to get the first item. I follow its next reference to get the next item. I follow its next reference to get this item. This is sometimes known as walking a list. So to use our analogy, what I would do is I would only know the first person in the list. And so I would go to that person, okay, who's the next person? Who do you have down as your next person? And they would say, oh, it's Bob. And I would go to Bob and I would say, okay, who do you have down as your next person? And they would say, oh, it's Alice. And I would go to Alice and whatever. And I could still follow a list this way. Um, there are some different trade-offs. And as we construct an implementation for this particular approach, we're going to ex see those trade-offs in action. We'll actually see them in our code. There are certain operations um, that are faster to perform on this type of list, and in particular operations that index into the list. Because if I want to look up where a particular item is, it's very fast to do. I just look it up in the array and I can get right there. The things that are slow here are making modifications to the list because I have to shift everything around. In contrast, with the linked list, um, it can be very slow to find an element because every time I have to walk the list starting from the very beginning. So if the list gets very long, the process of finding an element can get very slow because I have to walk this chain from reference to reference to reference to reference until I find the item that I'm looking for. In contrast, certain operations on this type of list are very fast. So for example, if I want to add a new item to this list, it turned at the beginning it turns out to be very fast. It's a constant time operation. Um, adding items at the interior of the list starts to become slower because I have to find the right place. But there are certain applications that only add or remove items from the very end of a list. And those applications can benefit from using, can benefit, can benefit from using a linked list approach. So we'll get into the code for this, but you know, I just want to one more time go over the, the differences here. So an array list has this internal array, and that's how it stores the position. So it's the array that maintains the position of each object. And to maintain the positions, I have to put objects into the right slot in the array. In contrast, a linked list, every item in the list knows what the next item is, but there's no array that's used here anywhere. Instead, what I do to find a certain item is the list class maintains a reference to the start item, and I use that to get myself to the first item and I use its next reference to get to the next item and next item and, I, and that's called walking the list. And that's how I look up items in the list. So that's a slower process um, of indexing into the list in the linked list, but there are some operations on it that are faster.